In almost all of the early PHP books, you'll see the syntax such as variable names, function names and so on being written in snake case which looks like this. But in more recent years, a lot of people have started teaching PHP using camel case like this. So I thought it was worth taking a minute or two just to talk about how this change came about and just also maybe put this within the context of the wider web development community. So PHP was invented in the 90s by Rasmus Lerdorf and it was built using primarily C but also with some C++. Now this is kind of cool because PHP developers when they look at the C language unlike a lot of other developers, they feel strangely at home and PHP shares a lot of syntax with those two C languages which is kind of a cool thing, you know? Now in the C programming community they use a lot of snake case. It's no surprise then that when PHP came out we tended to do a lot of things like that even with a function we might say add to cart for example. Very common. But nowadays you don't see too much of that. Uh, you'll see things like this instead. So to understand why that happened, we need to look at the broader web development context and how PHP fits into that context. Now here's a screenshot from the classic game Donkey Kong and it's probably a, a daft idea this. But I want you to imagine that each of these levels represents a different level where a technology can exist like PHP. Now let's imagine that this barrel of oil here represents your computer processor. As we get closer to the processor things get a lot more fast but they also get a bit more difficult to read actually. So at this level that's right beside the processor we have machine code. Now if you do an image search for machine code, sometimes it's called binary, then you'll inevitably find something like this. So it's all ones and zeros. Now as we move up to the next level, we have assembly language. This is an example of what assembly language looks like. And in this example, what you're looking at is some code that has been designed to talk to a MOS 6502 processor. This is the processor that was used in the Commodore 64, the Apple II, and in this example we are looking at the code required to register joystick movements on an old Atari 2600. Now one of the things that makes assembly language so difficult, and by the way, I cannot write assembly language, I do know that one of the things that makes it really difficult is not just the syntax and the fact that it's incredibly slow to work with, but also even after you have your assembly language working, well, it may not work on another processor. People who write assembly language are writing code that literally talks to different parts of the processors. It's an extremely difficult thing to do and mind-blowingly time-consuming. Now as we move up to the next level, this is where we start to see programming languages that might just seem a little bit more familiar. This is where you'll get things like C, C++, Fortran and a handful of others. These are languages that have been built in such a way that they can be compiled directly into assembly language. Now, this is a monumental task to create one of those programming languages. They're very rare and there's not too many of them. Whenever a language is occupying this zone here, it gets considered a true thoroughbred programming language. This is pretty much the safe zone and anything that occupies this space is incredibly performant, very fast and well, quite frankly, was probably built by people who know what they were doing. So that's that level. Now, as we move up to the next level, this is where things become interesting. This is where we get things like PHP and JavaScript, kind of. <laughs> so, PHP, when you run PHP, you're essentially running 
a programming, or rather a program, that happens to have been made using the C language. That's what PHP is. So sometimes PHP gets called a pseudo programming language, sometimes a scripting language. Now I put JavaScript in the same level as PHP here, because for a long long time JavaScript was also this sort of scripting language. Some people consider this to be a kind of Mickey Mouse type of programming, you know? Now I don't agree with that type of thing. I think that the status of a programming language should not depend on where it operates in relation to the processor. I think it should be declared based on what it does. Given the fact that PHP can handle classes and all of that stuff, OOP, and all of the things that we would expect from a decent programming language, I would call PHP a programming language. Now there is a level even higher up. And I would say that frameworks occupy that level. So for example, this is typical code that you might see on a PHP framework. Things like um, fetching an ID from the third segment of a URL, or getting the previous URL, or maybe getting flash data, or setting flash data, or something like that. Now sure, this is PHP code, that is for sure. However, what has happened when you see this type of thing is that somebody has taken a task such as getting, you know, a character from the URL and they've simplified it and at some level the framework will convert these things into maybe three, four or five lines of PHP code. Anyway, you will not be surprised to learn that the higher up we go, the slower everything becomes, and the lower we go as we move towards the processor, then suddenly everything starts to get faster and faster. Now, this level here is absolutely critical. This is what I would call the safe zone. If you can build something and have it occupy this space, then congratulations, you have built a thoroughbred programming language, and this is a sweet spot that's pretty much universally respected across academia, the web development industry, programmers and all sorts. The challenge is building something that occupies this space is astonishingly difficult. Building something like PHP, which is a way up here, is very, very difficult. But it's probably doable. There are people watching this video, probably a lot of you, who could attempt something like that and have a reasonable shot at it. But this here, the safe zone, this is truly a very difficult place to reach. Now there's something about this image of mine that's not entirely accurate. You see, there's one little technology here that did something quite remarkable a number of years back, and that is JavaScript. Because for a long time, JavaScript was this little Mickey Mouse scripting language. It was something that people who made browsers would add on as a sort of afterthought, but it was considered just a scripting language. It wasn't very fast, wasn't very useful actually for the most part. But then in 2008, Google created the V8 JavaScript engine. This was something quite remarkable because what this did is it took JavaScript from this level up here to this level here. This is absolutely astonishing and I'm not aware of this ever happening in the history of our industry because what this meant is that now JavaScript had changed from being a little Mickey Mouse scripting language to being a thoroughbred programming language occupying the same space as C, C++, Fortran and others. As soon as the V8 engine came out, suddenly everybody knew what way the wind was blowing. It was clear that JavaScript was now set to take over the world, and out of nowhere we had an explosion of JavaScript technologies and frameworks, things like Ember, of course Node.js, Angular, React, and all the rest of it. Now the thing about JavaScript is that JavaScript uses camel case, or at least <laughs> add to cart. JavaScript developers tend to use camel case, that's where they are comfortable, okay? 
However, before you say, okay, let's all write code that looks like JavaScript, which is what a lot of people are currently doing, you might want to pause for a moment because camel case does have ambiguity. For example, here's a little JavaScript that you might have seen, get element uh, by ID. Okay, now look at the ID there. You could have done that, but believe it or not, that would cause an error. And then on the other hand, we've got code like this that we see in JavaScript quite a lot. So this camel case business does leave a lot of room for ambiguity. If we were to use snake case, then I believe that errors become a lot less likely. And I think that snake case is more robust. Ultimately, you have a choice. If you want to write code like a JavaScript developer, use camel case. However, if you want to write code that looks like C and is more robust, then use snake case. Ultimately though, the one that you like best is the winner. And so this is why I always say, use what makes you feel good. I'll see you in the next video.